let's get her uh, taped up and pro and uh, put Andy Fowling on. She knows along the. What time did you start? Seven. Seven a.m. So it looks like my suspicions were right. These two, there's like a little groove line in there. So the only time I read instructions is when the equipment's really expensive. We bought an old abandoned catamaran, spent two years rebuilding her and embarked on a 7,000 mile journey across the Atlantic Ocean to our dream cruising grounds, the beautiful Caribbean. Subscribe below and follow the adventure as we explore our way up the Caribbean chain of islands to the beautiful Bahamas. In our previous episode, Ricky got down to sanding the hull to prep it for a fresh new coat of anti-fouling. But first, we had to wipe down the hulls. The primer touch-ups are done. Did the sail drive boots, primed. Little patches here and there. There was one, there was one. That was from when it was on the on the ground in back South Africa. Like it was touching so the paint couldn't cure nicely before we were sitting in the water. And this little touch up here was from when we played a little bit of bump and grind in Ascension. I um, mean St. Helena. So, yep, we're good. We're gonna put the tape right around now and then we'll start with the anti-fouling. We wiped it down so the dust is off. We washed it twice with fresh water and I think we're good to go now. Let's get her uh, taped up and, pro and uh, put anti-fouling on. We're going to same anti-fouling PPG just because we got it on. When this is done, maybe in like two years time or whatever, then we might change. But yeah, that's what we're going with. The next step was to tape. Got a new kid on the block. Check out that little sucker. 70 feet of pure maverick. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe below if you haven't already and click on the notification bell to alert you when we upload a new episode and like this video as well as share it with your friends and family. It's a free way you can support our channel. How's it going? Don't you remember how fun this used to be? You remember me and Mosey did this. But yeah, it's no fun. A knee, a knee buster. Yeah, it is a legit knee buster. Remember I was sitting on the floor and you were laughing at me? Mm. I know I was sitting on the floor. Do you understand? Oh, we got the inside, huh? Uh huh. So Ricky finished doing all the anti-fouling. She looks good. Cleaned up all our little pranks that we had in St. Helena. Oh, you must be so knackered, babes. I'm finished, eh? Mm -hmm. It was a long day. It looks really good, though. Thank you. And how, how far are you with the episode? I'm rocking it. So we're going to have some holidays soon. I know. We've increased the water. Can you see the increase in the water line? Well, we'll have to go outside to see that. You don't really notice it when you're inside yeah. the holes. Ah, 
like you covered up my brain. The dent at the back? Yeah, when we yeah. hit uh, the dock in Cape Town. We didn't hit the dock. Well, it did with the... The dock hit us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, the dock didn't hit us. There's the wind. No, remember they changed the docking in Cape Town? Oh, and we got into yeah. that new section and then where that uh, support beam, beam was, yeah. was, they didn't put padding around the... Um, but it was the wind steel. still. It was the wind that picked up yeah, the black line. But it was also... Check it out. She looks good. She hey. looks like <laughs> when we did her pee. Yeah. <laughs> um, that paint held up pretty well. You know, we didn't give it a fair chance here in what's the name, but we had a lot of barnacle growths in in Clark Court, so we didn't give it enough time to see how she would have held up. The poop for today. What happened to? Oh, I'm gonna do the prop glide and I'm gonna do the seals. <sighs> Tomorrow. And I'm gonna do the anodes. Tomorrow, prop prop glide, seals, anodes, finish. Tomorrow is Friday, and then if and all's the good. Anchor. Saturday in the water. So that means we would have been out for like five days. Right? No, four days. Yes, baby, you look so tired. You're making me sad. It was long. You have like an indent in your head. You know how long the day was? Oh, we started geez, at 7 o'clock in the morning. You know, it was a long day. What time did you start? 7. 7 a.m. <laughs> Paint is still left. Oh, the thing's full. Okay, then your bathroom floor and then the touch-ups in the room. The following day it was time to service our sail drives. So this is the gearbox. Since new we've had water on this gearbox and um, could have been the seal the of here because we bonded it back together when we fitted the sail drive in. Or it could just be the main seals, which is the more common thing to go is the main seals. But this was like literally from our first trip down to Cape Town. This this already had um, water in it. That's why the possibility I say is that. I mean, I haven't heard these seals like right off the bat being bad, but so yeah, we're gonna have to take it apart, check the seals, and um, we might as well just replace them. Hopefully, we can get these seals. These are ZF gearboxes which are supposed to be similar to a Volvo gearbox so hopefully we can get the seals put them in it will be good to go I didn't open the breather too much and just so that this can drain out slower so we have less mess So it looks like my suspicions were right. These two, there's like a little groove line in there. And I think that's exactly where it was leaking, right over there. Not so not this part, but this part here. Yeah. So we've got the parts all cleaned up. Gonna head out to the marine guys and see if we can um, get seals from them. Seals and anode, so that would be great. The shaft's all cleaned up, looking really good. We're gonna clean this up a little bit more if we feel it's necessary. But she looks good. Put in good new seals and it's lubed as a precautionary. I don't think it was the seals. I mean the other ones just looked way, way too perfect. And they got 330 hours on, so I think there was contamination before either when we assembled it or afterwards I might have contaminated with dirty oil or something. Well, with oil that had water in it. I'm gonna clean this face around here and then the face on the engine with some denatured alcohol and then put a bead of uh, the silicon maker. So this, these o-rings actually do the sealing but just to be extra safe we seal them up, seal the space up too.
it a give it a, a minute or two just for that to set up a little and we'll go on and remember that outside one is not the seal these two o-rings are actually what does the seal that's just like a little extra prevention what i've also done is i've flushed it with diesel first and then oil after that just to make sure that i get absolutely every last little bit of contamination out and she's squeaky clean like i can see fresh oil in there i'm not seeing any more milkiness i've rotated the pinion gear and that's perfect yeah the gearbox is brand new so it's still looking very very nice and the boots are on the boots look shabby and they're really strong i tried to push them and all of that deform they're holding on tight so that did the trick glue them on properly it'll stay on for a long time that gearbox while we're out i drained it and um, as you can see it's still dripping there so that one will get new oil and then everything's new and i won't have to worry about these gearboxes for the next 300 hours now she goes in initially at an angle so that you can miss the top gear. There we go. Let's do some pruning. I'm trying to on the on those bolts to make sure that they stay in and stay secured. But also want them to come loose after all. So I'm going to clean everything up here so that I can start coating the props with uh, prop glide. I could do it when they're on. You think why, why shouldn't I do it while they're on? Maybe I should do that. Just put everything back together and just do the prop glide straight on, on the thing and I can kind of turn it. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Put the props on and, um, and then I'll apply the prop glide directly to it and hopefully the prop glide will help us. I bought the little kit. So it's a small kit and hopefully it'll be enough to do two propellers don't, don't have to do sail drive so hopefully that'll be enough and because we can't get anodes probably gonna have to do all of this underwater that's gonna be sucky This is the thrust washer. Pretty much what takes the loading from the prop onto the shaft. Grease it up nicely. On she goes, she sits on that collar there. And with these things, I just like to put a heap turn. And the reason for that is, I'm gonna have to take this off underwater. And I wanna make sure that everything's gonna come off real easy. If you guys have checked our previous video, I actually remove this boot which means you need to take everything off here when we were floating off uh, Fernando de Noronha the island of Brazil and um, I changed that took the boot out um, just free diving so it was quite a few dives to, to finally get everything off and replaced Screwdriver in there, give it a nice little nip. That little one spacer goes in there. Lock nut first. Nuts go on there to lock it in place. Oh. 
Ricky laughs at me because I was doing paint touch-ups on the boat and I literally paint myself all the time and he's like you do such a little job and then you paint the crap out of yourself he thinks it's hilarious um, but I'm pretty chuffed with my work I'll show you guys Once our sail drives were serviced and our propellers had been installed again, it was time to get started on the prop guide. On a scale of 1 to 10, how upset are you that you have to put your old anodes back on? I'm bummed because I'm going to do the job twice now. But that's what happens. I was assured that the adaption kits were for the sail drive and yeah, they're not. So the anodes would work, but I haven't got the, adapt the adapter kit. For the sail drive and you think we can get one in Grenada no yeah. chance three to four weeks minimum so how are we gonna get it there you can get it and ship it in the DHL or something and when it gets here then we'll hop in underwater with scuba gear can you do it underwater yeah how do you think I took the gland off on the other side in in what's her name so I took all of this off to get that land off when I died. You're gonna do it in the Bahama so that you can find it if it falls off again. <laughs> yeah. So the only time I read instructions is when the equipment's really expensive. So that little kit was 170 US dollars, and I don't know if it's just because it's in Grenada. I don't know what they cost online. I didn't check. But it says we should send the the props with. 60 to 80 grit sandpaper we've sanded the entire prop all the old anti-fouling's off everything's clean okay so we're gonna mix the primer with the hardener mix pro 30 seconds apply mixture sander surface immediately after mixing so step one clean it with denatured alcohol first i used uh, thinners to take off oils from the mounting process. Now I'm using denatured alcohol and I'm going to do this twice. I did notice I went to that boat and I checked the props because they got prop glide on it and I've noticed the most wear is at the high speed part which is the edge of the prop so I'm going to go extra thick on the edges. Is that yellow stuff prop? Yeah. This beautiful magnificent beast <laughs> came up next to us yesterday we met the owners well not the owner, we met the captain and the deckhand and they were like oh we love your boat it has so much character <laughs> so now i gotta go to the other side while well, this one dries because once you start cannot stop and between the primer and the top coat mm -hmm. you have 15 minutes <gasps> maximum how are you gonna do that babe because you're super slow i'm super skilled And um, so yeah, we got. I think we got quite a lot done. Yeah. And if we, which we won't be able to go in tomorrow, but if we can go in Tuesday, it would not have been that expensive haul out. Shake it like a salt, shake it, shake it like a salt, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. So, I don't know, is that the primer now? Is that what makes it yellow? Yeah. Oh, it smells funny. I'll just smell it. Maybe it's toxic. <laughs> so, one thing definitely don't put the hardener straight in and start mixing. First, mix the primer without the hardener because there's a lot of settling clay type things at the bottom. Here comes little Elijah. Elijah. Oh, look at the bike of mine. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, look at that bike of mine. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, it's so cute. What are you doing? Prop guide. Prop, yeah. I'm glad. But Ricky's been like stirring that thing for the last Dude, hour. Dude, the shit sits at the bottom of this thing. Makes like a clay. So luckily I didn't mix the hardener in first otherwise because you only have like 30 seconds. Yeah. So primer hardener for the whole primer. Everything at once. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
30 seconds later. <laughs> Cut on that one. Get that right, let's go back to the first one. these two paintbrushes on so chop the paintbrush is okay to fit so I gauged it <laughs> we're too lazy to buy a paintbrush that would fit no it's just too reasonable but now it's gonna come out isn't it you're gonna make it all full of fibers and stuff no The primer had already been painted on, so next step was to apply the top coat. We definitely got a lot of tasks complete this week. Don't forget to subscribe below if you haven't already and give this video a big thumbs up. See you guys next week.